my name is Patty Fernandez and I'm a student in the health psychology program and Diane is a uh, master's student in the um, clinical psychology program and we had the opportunity to conduct the research and that's what I will be talking about today. The uh, title is Colorectal Cancer and Screening, uh, Screening Findings of a Focus Group Investigation. I will just take you briefly through our study's background, objective, methods, results, and conclusion, and then tell you just briefly about our experience with the HHDRC grant. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States, um, unfortunately, and uh, it is estimated that for this year, close to 147,000 new cases will emerge along um, close to 50,000 deaths. In, according to the Texas Cancer Registry, El Paso, in El Paso, the, mo the fourth uh, most common cancer is colorectal cancer. However, research has found that if proper screening is used, it may prevent 50 to 60 percent of the cases that are out there. Um, and although research has found that in general, the, the incidence of colorectal cancer in the nation among whites um, has decreased among Hispanics and African Americans, this rate has remained the same for ages 60, 60 and, and younger. And what we found that although there is um, an extent uh, amount of literature and information, there's a lack of adequate um, uh, education in terms of colorectal cancer and the procedures and benefits. So um, what Diane and I did is um, we, we wanted to explore Mexican-American men and women's opinions of the content and structure of informative and effective decision aids for colorectal cancer that would optimize decision making for of preventative measures and screening procedures. So uh, we had a criteria for people that had to, they had to meet in order to participate in our study. They had to be Hispanic, 50 years or older. They had to be an El Paso resident and English speakers. Um, pr prior to, what, what we did is we passed out flyers throughout the El Paso community and they had our phone number. They contacted us. Once they contacted us, we went through a screening, screening questionnaire and once they, um, they, they were able to participate with us, we scheduled them to come in. All participants fill out a consent form in a uh, demographic questionnaire. And we had a total of 23 per participants, 17 women and eight men. Um, the mean age was 56. And uh, the majority of them were married, about half of them employed. 39% had some type of college education and 60% had an, an annual um, total household income of $30,000 or less. We had a total of five focus groups and what we did is we separate men and women just to ensure that they were able to um, talk about colorectal cancer and they didn't, they wouldn't feel uncomfortable. We had two um, men focus, uh, two focus groups of men and three focus groups of women. For each focus, focus group, uh, we had a moderator and a note taker. All sessions were recorded and these are samples of some of the questions that we asked. Um, who do you think is a risk for colorectal cancer? Where, where have you heard about colorectal cancer and screening? And what type of information would you like to see in terms of colorectal cancer and screening? And so we went through the whole focus group data collection process. After all of the sessions were finished, we transcribed, two individuals transcribed the, the recordings to ensure that there weren't any mistakes in the transcription. Once we did that, three of the researchers um, got the list of the transcriptions and we had to come up with categories and subcategories um, that we found throughout the, the transcriptions. We met, we made sure that, that, um, that we agreed upon the categories and subcategories. And once that, that was done, we brought in um, all of the transcriptions into ATLAS, which is a program that helps you, do, um, helps you analyze qualitative data. In the ATLAS program, we developed a system, a coding system, and once we had the coding system, everything, 
then we evaluated the merging and overlapping um, themes. Okay. And these are some of the results, and I hope that, uh, that you, you're able to see them. We had several themes that we found across, I'm including six um, that are very um, interesting. In terms of people not getting screened, I don't know if you're able to see, here we have three. One, there, there is a little bit of false information that um, people have, barriers and external um, controls. And um, in terms of false information, people don't get screened, even though all of them were Hispanic, they, the majority of them felt that Hispanics are not at risk for colorectal cancer, when in fact um, the rates are still stagnant for, for our group. Um, if even m many of them thought that it was not hereditary and there were um, no symptoms at all. In terms of um, barriers, you can see that the same barriers that we found in, we have found in previous research, such as cost and insurance. However, we did find several several participants who told us that strict tests um, are hard to follow, to strict diets. I'm sorry, are hard to follow to get the test done. So, for example, if you have to follow a certain diet or um, drink certain things before the test, it was very difficult to them because of work constraints. And that, that was one of the reasons why they did not get screened. In terms of external controls, we had participants who said that there was no need for them to get screened um, because it was up to the doctor to tell them when or not to get screened, regardless of whether they needed it or not. In, um, in the two other ones that we find, found where people felt it's up to God to decide when they get sick or not, and if they are sick, even then to feel in um, destiny. If they're destined to be sick, then um, that's their destiny, right? And even if they get screened and, and get, go to treatment, it doesn't matter because if they're destined not to heal, um, they won't. We also asked them what would be some of the information that they would like to find in any type of um, informational decision made. And, um, and an interesting one, some of them are similar to what exists out there, but one of them that's interesting to point out is that participants, and there was a majority of them, they wanted to know to what family members go through. So they, they wanted to know once an individual is diagnosed with colorectal cancer, and they have to go to the screening procedure and the treatment. They want to know all the steps and how they can help this individual. And then um, in terms of outlets where they would like to see information, they mentioned several, several of them, and some of them that already exist. Although I, I have to point out this, the majority of them mentioned that they would like to see them more as a group. In other words, ideally, they would like to go to a workshop where there's a doctor and experts who know about colorectal cancer and they can answer the question along with um, people who have had colorectal cancer and they can share their experience with them. And um, once they're done with the workshop and learning about it, they can take a video home and they can discuss that video with family and members and then pass on the information. And one of the last questions that we asked participants was, if there is one thing that will convince you to get screened, what would it be? And there are several, several one of them. And one interesting to point out is, we don't want family members to suffer. So if we find that, or not screening um, causes our relatives to, to suffer, to, um, to feel sad and worried about, ourselves, uh, about us, then we will go get screened. So that was uh, an interesting one that we found. Um, and some of the other ones are similar to what we've seen. And also if they had an experience with a relative or a friend passing away due to colorectal cancer, they would definitely get to go. So what are the implications of our mini study, so to speak? Um, we found that although there is plenty of information out there about colorectal cancer, we still have at least this group, we had several individuals who, were, were, who lacked a lot of information. Many people kept talking about colonoscopies. They kept, me kept mentioning colonoscopies, but I probably one or two really knew what the procedure meant. And um, so, although the information exists, they, there is a, a, 
a gap between the information and understanding the information. And perhaps um, the, the suggestion that was, uh, was given quite a bit was a comprehensive approach of trying to include several means at the same time instead of just one, instead of just handing out a pamphlet or the doctor talking to you. Um, and, and one of the major reasons for that is because sometimes um, participants, the doctors will mention to them that they, they need to get a test done, however, they, they don't understand why they need, that, need to get them done. And perhaps a comprehensive approach would help them to understand why it is that their doctors are suggesting that they get screened. Um, what we would like to do is, we definitely would like to conduct more focus groups. We only had five, 23 participants. Conduct more of them in English and more of them in Spanish. We wanted to start to start small so that we didn't have too many town founders, and that's why we started with an English speaking group. But eventually, we could move on and not only open it to El Paso residents, but to the whole El Paso area. And that way, we would be able to see if some of the categories and subcategories that we found can be confirmed across those groups. If they are, then we can develop a more complete decision aid for individuals to decide whether or not to get screened for colon rectal cancer, and then test it to see if it's effective. In terms of the HHDRC grant, it was a great opportunity for us grad students. I know um, it, it's, it, uh, it sounds like I'm biased because it's an HHDRC seminar, but it was a great opportunity for us. It, it was the first time for us to seek our own grant so um, for us to be able to come up with a budget, for example, was, um, was a very uh, um, good learning opportunity. And to be able to stay within that budget also. In terms of focus group, both Diane and I have done research for several professors. Um, we have done our own research in terms of thesis and dissertations, but we had never done a focus group from beginning to end. So it was a, it was a great experience. And some of the things that we found, for example, was that recruitment, recruitment was, a, was something very different, right? We were very used to trying to collect data from um, the, the intro to psychology pool, et cetera. Once you are talking about community members, it's a whole different ballgame. Um, also, data analysis. Although focus groups are not qualitative, they are, it, it, it takes a lot of time. And although we use this program, Atlas, to help us with the analysis, it, it was massive. Um, good experience though. In time, we, we had to be able to be very flexible with our timelines because um, we were very dependent on participants. We, we, um, we couldn't run focus groups if we didn't have anybody. Um, and so we, want, we would like to thank the, the HHDRC uh, grant, Dr. Morera, who's our mentor, and we had three uh, research assistants Laura Gomez, uh, Claudia Ornelas, and Rick Schimmitz. And that's it. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yes. Five, five focus groups, 23 people total. Um, anywhere from two to two to six. Well, our goal was four to six, but then we had we had a problem with people telling us that they were going to come and they didn't. And I forgot to mention we did. <laughs> yeah, that was a big. Um, but one of the, we did offer an incentive. One of the things that we noticed is perhaps we should have given a larger incentive. It was twenty dollars a twenty dollar gift certificate to Walmart, but um, perhaps we could have made a, a little bit of a larger amount than that.
actually half of them are employed and the other half are unemployed. We have one retire, uh, retiree and, um, and one that was that, that had uh, uh, a uh, disabled veteran. One and one. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. In terms of income, all of the majority were in the lower income. It, it was even lower than 30,000, um, a little bit. Um, I mean, it was half, I'm sorry, 60% were 30,000 and less. But we had, um, we had a really interesting makeup. We had um, a large amount of people who were, who had a less than a high school education. And then we had another group that had a master. And even then, we found lack of information or misleading information. Although we had people, several people who had, we had four who had a master. Any other questions? Yes. Um, only one of them. Um, everyone else had lived their whole entire life in El Paso. Okay, if they lasted from um, 50 minutes to an hour, about. Um, generally, people were very talkative, mm -hmm. just the, with the exception of one group. And surprisingly, the males were very talkative. Too. So, yeah, I, we were very surprised. If they were very willing to share information, um, even some of their experiences with doctors. Although we did find across that um, most of them felt men were more at risk than women for colorectal cancer, both men and women. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. And th that brings up another uh, good point. We had, there were about six of them who work in, who work as assistants or such in, me, in the medical area, and still we found this. We there was one individual who was telling us that she had gone to the doctor, she went for um, a, a sore throat, and came out with an order to get a, a corrector screen, and she had she was clueless why she needed to, and all she she remembered yeah, and all she remembered was I am never going to, and she she was laughing. She said she would call him Mr. Colonoscopy Doctor. I'm never going back to Mr. Colonus. So we, we had people sharing their own experiences. Um, we had a few of them that had a, 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 a strong mistrust toward doctors. But in, in its majority, they, they did trust the doctors. However, um, not many of them received information. The one, the one disabled veteran, he, he did. He did mention that um, when he went to for checkups, he always, they always mentioned hey, you know, you need to get screen, or have you ever thought about getting screen? That was one word they, they did mention. Yes. Yes. Right, and, and, that was, and that's why they thought they didn't need to be informed. There was no need for them to figure out whether or not screening was good or which screen they wanted to, to, um, to use because it was the, it's up to the doctor. If the doctors had to get it done, even if they didn't need it, if they thought they didn't need it, they would get it done. Yes.
we had a couple who also said on the way home, they give us pamphlets, we read them, and we don't understand them. So if they were to simplify the words or relate them a little bit more to us, we'll be able to. A lot of them said testimony. If we were able, there were about five of them who mentioned Katie Curry had a special on TV, and she, they said that was very informational because they could see the whole process, the video of what was actually happening. And, and many of them were, up, were wondering what would happen. So if, if um, knowing or being able to administer this information, then the, hopefully the fear reduces in terms of the screening. Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, well, and uh, for those of you who have conducted focus groups, you know you, you're asking questions, you're leading them, and you're, you're, so to speak, just moderating. You cannot give any information. And some of them wanted, thought that it just could be a, an informational thing. So yes, um, and w the only thing that we could do with, with that was hand out pamphlets with information for them to take and read. But um, some of them were thinking that. We had just a couple who thought, well, are we getting a colonoscopy today? <laughs> so we had to <laughs> let them know <laughs> that we weren't doing that. So not in the psychology department, right? <laughs> At least not there. <laughs> so any other questions? Yes. It, it was both, they were destined, if they're destined to be sick, and then it's God. They feel God has complete control over their, their lives. There's no way for them to make, be making any decisions. So, and, and that was interesting too, because they would say, in terms of doctors, we trust them, because obviously God put, put, put them there, and he must choose them for the right doctors, and that's why I'm seeing him or her, which, um, yeah, we need to, to, to find a way to teach them, to, to be able to teach others, that prevention can, can be something that we control. No, that's, that's a good question. No, it wasn't. And we were very concerned about that. But again, um, you heard about the time constraints and finding researchers that would help us do, conduct the research. But no, we didn't have um, that. However, participants were very articulate um, with their opinions. They would tell us about the procedures and various things that we were surprised. So that, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's excellent because they mentioned, for example, like steel magnolia. That's a good example of someone having a, a, a type of uh, disease. And it was so um, vivid and all this. Even though it was not a, based on a true story, it was very, it made a very vivid and made a big impression on them. So something that's, that we relate more to probably will be more vivid and more memorable. Okay. So thank you so much for your attention.